Well, we can start and we probably should in case we need the full <laughs> time. So if the meeting will come to order, um, I'd like to have people approve the minutes unless you have any uh, corrections to make. And I listen to the speaker, Sean. You're glad he's terrible. You're a terrible talker. Dude, oh, he's not. I thought he was a good talker. I know. I kept saying, ah, 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 ah. I don't know. Which speaker was this? The one in Cambridge. Really? Okay. Okay. I shouldn't mock. I couldn't stand it. Okay. Well, anyway, um, we're looking at the minutes. So has anyone any corrections? It's, if not, the minutes are approved as presented. Thank you, Megan. Okay, I'm just very quickly uh, on Wadley Park. I emailed the letter to the selectmen and I got a response right away from uh, Paul Grady, who said he would make sure that the selectmen take it up. And I also got a response from Jean Dipple. So I thought that was really, really good. So at some, they've been busy, of course, with this special town meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but I thought that was that was very positive. Does, does that white house that uh, but well, is that all in Cohasset or Hull? Cohasset. Oh, I've never yeah. done. I've lived, you know, for as long as I lived there, I just never done. I I did take a look at the Windsor Shore. That's actually in Hull. Um, it's a very nice place. If you ever go down to Wildby Park, you just walk along that I don't know, causeway or whatever it is. And it's it's on the left as you walk toward Hull. And you'll see a a sign of an interpretive sign, which is oh, yeah. very nice. And then you walk in along a little path and there's a granite bench donated by the uh, Windsor family. And it's a very calm, peaceful spot. I very, found a couple lovely. old photographs of that um area. And where the parking lot is now, like the, the pull throughs, if you're coming from Hull, used to be like a street, it used to come down Hull, like from Hull, like you could bang, bang through there. There's, I, I'll, I'll send the, I'll send the, those, I'll take those photos out of my phone. Okay. You know, I'll forward them along. It was kind of a bad thing to look at it because there was nothing, it was just a triangle. Right. And all those, all those reeds and everything else on the other side of this, on that part of the street was, was gone. It was just like all like level. You could see all the way into Upstreet's Pond, into um, Hall. You mean across from Wadley Park? Well, if you if you, had, if you had your back to Rocky Beach, yeah, where you would have the Black Rock Hotel up on the right on the left, right? You could there was there were, it was not overgrown. Hmm. It was all cut down. Interesting. All landscape. Oh, I wouldn't say landscape. That's like that's modern term, but yeah. it was all like level, and you could probably standing right where. That what over that in that middle of the triangle, you can probably see right up the straight, right up straight spot. Yeah, and I was curious about. I know that I think you said that across the street, like on the Straits Pond side, yeah. across from Wadley Park, where it's overgrown. Right. That's that's actually part of the Wadley. But that actually triangle. was a yes. That part was the main part. part. Does that? Is that I I can't tell. It's pretty. I tried to walk through there. It's pretty dense. Mm -hmm. I don't think it goes all the way to Straits Pond. I, I don't know. I, but, I, I but, couldn't but tell. You, but I also have you. I think you said that that was um, earmarked by the select board for to make it into a parking lot. And I was yeah. thinking, wouldn't it be nice to just cut it down and you know that Windsor area that goes to Straits Pond is so lovely with just a bench. Right. But wouldn't it be nice to extend the park and keep the space green? Well, that's instead of that was the intent. That's well, first the I'm sure when Wadley gave it to the town, it was it wasn't yeah. overgrown like that. And I think it the intent was to make it a park like um well, maybe the common, you know, just a nice area where people could walk and so forth. But I don't. It, I think it'll cost. It would cost some money now to do that. But who knows? They might decide to do that in the future. This, this would you see, town land. Money for that? Probably. Yeah. I would think you could. You probably could. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it. Would be well, I wonder what. I wonder, I wonder if 
Conservation. Conservation. But conservation will come down hard. That's the thing. Well, conservation actually As create, the created the, the exactly they, they, they created the Windsor the Park, the Windsor Shore area mm -hmm. with the conservation. Right. But that right. was we could partner with them. How's that? Exactly. But I was thinking that it, it it's so nice to walk down to Straits Pond. Yeah. And it would be nice to come from the other side too. It would be nice. Well, that's that's something that you know we should think about at some point. Um, that would be a project. Okay. There, uh, there was a group, Friends of Wadley Park. Really? Yeah. When? That was years ago. Yeah. Hmm. And um, and I think a good resource for how the local neighborhood would respond would include uh, Gary Vanderwell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, that's not a bad beginning. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I could speak to him. I I know Anne very well. All righty. Uh, and the second uh, rather quick thing is the web page update. Um, as you know, the web the new web page is launched, and what remains to be done at this point is the brochure. And Megan and uh, Julia had worked on that, and now it's a, a question of sort of <laughs> how, how, shaping it so that it, it fits into the uh, format of the menu on the side yeah, there. Exactly. So that'll take a little thinking. But yeah, um, I'll live on the right, page, so right now, right? You yeah. sent you sent out the draft of the uh, brochure and. If I think everyone got that, um, did you want people just to sort of um, respond to that? Yeah, or? I mean, oh, I don't know if we can do it over. We probably we probably should do it at the next meeting. Yeah, the next meeting. I didn't get one. Oh, you didn't? Okay, she. Okay. I'll just send it. Um, but yeah, then maybe if you could just come with any feedback on okay. the section. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the ed editing, if they. Refrain from like you know that copy editing at this point because it's like right. We'll definitely get there, but like the overall actions yeah. yeah. are direction of going. Right. Okay, that'll be on the agenda for the next time. All right, now Noel, you can talk about your. Um, you wanted to do both the. I think it's essay contest and the historical preservation. Very report. brief. Okay. But before I move on, can we get copied on the Wadley Park letters and responses? Oh, they're very, sh I can just read, they're very brief. It was just two lines. It was, um, thank you. This is from Paul. Thank you, Jackie. I will make it a point to raise this issue. And Jean said, thank you, Jackie. We will look into this. And your letter. Can and the letter, yeah. Can you copy okay, I can do that. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so um, I, don't, I don't recall what motivated me to uh, put these on the agenda. I think I was doing a search, a Google search of, creative things that historical commissions do in Massachusetts. And these these were popped right out. Um, and I think at the last meeting, someone mentioned, I, I was hung up on seniors or jun juniors and seniors being the constituents for the essay contest. And then somebody else mentioned, well, maybe younger students. And, and I dismissed that, but I really regret that because that could actually be even more interesting. So I'd like that to be uh, considered <clears throat> basically wide open. And uh, I think that should be discussed anyway, or contemplated. And the second thing was the historical preservation award, which I think we've all looked at the Cambridge model. And I, uh, as soon as I saw that, I, I read just a, a five minutes into it and then realized I was certainly not going to be the proponent of this issue, but I knew somebody who might. <laughs> and uh, and, I, and I hope that happens. Uh, but those two things also, I think, should have some commonality. If you're going to do both, I think you don't want to load up maybe you know, the awards season, if you will, in one quarter, but maybe do one award at one time of year and another at another time of year just so they can be considered apart from each other. Um, 
And with that, I put it on the table. Say, I, I'm not probably going to be able to do any of that. So it's wide open for anyone who may be interested in taking this forward. Um, but now I just put it on the table. Okay. Have we done those before? What's that? Have we done a uh, graduation proposal award? Whatever it is, is the only bylaw committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that, that's something different. Uh, we'll we'll get to the zoning bylaw committee in a minute, but in, in a way no, that they're... Oh, okay. Yeah, student student yeah. state contest. Yeah. And the historic preservation award. Have we done those before? Well, we we discussed the uh, high school student essay contest yeah. when Jack Buckley was here uh, last time, but uh, we didn't have time to get to the preservation award. So anyway. Um, and we have not historically done anything like these. No, yeah. no. And I, I'll speak last. I just want everyone to have a chance to talk. Jill, do you have some thoughts on I, these? I'm new. I'd like to listen more okay. first to it. Okay. Mark, I have to say. Mark, you I'm, intrigued, I'm intrigued by the doing the historical preservation for mm -hmm. proposal. Just like, mm -hmm. just in, the, in theory, I, I, I find, I mean, I'm intrigued by it. And uh, see how much interest within the community it would, um, you know, gather. You know, because we all know, like, really, the the common really is the is the anchor, um, so to speak, of the historical nature of the, the village, of course, um, of Cohasset. But there's a lot more, mm -hmm. and I think it might. I would hope. Um, you know, maybe maybe have give pause to somebody who was looking to put a match to their house so they can just get it for the lot and then proverbial mm -hmm. per see put the match to the house and so they can get the lot and they can build what they want. Well, yeah, I I I like the idea of a preservation award, but I think it has you it has to recognize something that. Um, is produced by a preservation plan, which we really don't have a program in Cohasset yet. And we'll come to that next, which is really what the uh, by zoning bylaw committee is proposing. And I'll read you a letter from Tom Callahan on that. But to me, um, you have to have kind of a program for preservation, and then you award the very good examples of, of maybe a house that was saved from demolition and restored very well, or a house that was badly deteriorated. Well, like you saw in the, in the Cambridge pictures, if you if you watch that a little bit. I, I hadn't um, thought of that. I didn't consider that at all, that there would need to be more formal program in place first. I it doesn't have to be, but I thought, you know, it would make more sense and then you have to sort of think of a venue, you know, if you're going to have an award. Right. I mean, that case <laughs> was a catered affair. It had, I mean, it was a big deal with a lot of people there. But you have to make it, you know, I think you have to make it worthwhile. I don't know. Perhaps for the preservation award, um, you, you just have to be aware of the how, and that's the other thing. How are you going to know? what houses have been restored within the past year or so. Um, I, I did ask, I called, uh, or I actually um, asked this Charlie um, uh, Sullivan, Sullivan. Yeah. How, how they, how, how you can tell which houses have been renovated. I said, did, you know, do people nominate these houses or what? And he said, um, so some of our award candidates come through our regulatory process. In, the, in other words, the uh, demolition delay bylaw and the historical districts, and they have to, in Cambridge anyway, I think the rules are a little different depending on where you go. But um, they find, they learn about houses that are either going to be demolished and they, they try to persuade them not to, and, and then they do a very good job um, with, with this award. 
Um, and and he, he said, but we also take note of possible candidates as we encounter them on our travels around the city. So it's just well, happenstance almost. You drive, it would be easier in Cohasset, just a smaller place. And then he said, we winnow through the accumulated candidates a couple of months before the awards event, before presenting a short list to the full commission. So I think they have a, they have a paid staff that does it. And then they present the um, a short list to the historical commission, which are volunteers like ourselves. And uh, the volunteers, the commissioners, pick the ones they feel deserve the award, I think. I think that's how it works. So um, anyway, that that's about as far as I, I went, but I, I really was wondering, you know, how do you, how do you identify the houses that you want to yeah. award? Both of these issues, the, um, the high school essay mm -hmm. and the historical preservation award made me curious about you know, what our role is in terms of advocacy, because, um, you know, if it would be great, as you're saying, to have a program that people know about, and there would be some recognition or reward mm -hmm. for preserving and renovating rather than raising, as you said. And then, with the essay contest, I mean, I've been an educator all my life, and I was on Zoom last time. But what really surprised me about Jack Buckley's presentation was, I believe he said that Cohasset history is not covered Anywhere in the curriculum, I don't know if you meant just in high the school, high school, but well, yeah. okay. So, um, you know, if if we want to be advocates for, and we want to, we want kids to grow up to be responsible citizens who don't raise old houses, who value um, their home, then. We have to. It, it's it, it seems like it's our job, not the committee's job, but it's the adult's job to educate kids first. And you know, we have such a rich. You all know we have such a rich history of the maritime and all the houses and the Native Americans. And you know, I never. I walk through the cemetery almost every day. I've never seen a school group down there finding the markers of the you know the people the Cohasset people who um who were at the Boston Tea Party. Um do you ever see kids going to the Maritime Museum or mm -hmm. any of that? And so um in thinking about an essay, it it would seem, you know, if if you have kids and starting at a young age, um, they study, they go to the, they go to Boston, they go to Concord, but there's, I mean, there's so up and down, do kids go to the whole life saving, saving museum? Do they, you know, there's so much, it's such a rich history. And, um, it, it just seems to make sense that to be <laughs> advocates and then kids grow up with an awareness and you might pique a child's interest about something about history or something like that. I, I think but it just made me wonder about advocacy and you know recognition for preserving rather than tearing down and building huge houses. I think the historical society did have a liaison to the school. I don't know, you know, that it's changed a, a bit. So I don't know if there's anyone assigned to that, but I know that they did have people go out there and um and there are times for example when we had the captain john smith celebration in uh 2014 um i was asked to go to the fifth grade i think maybe even by the fifth grade teachers to give a, a talk about john smith to the various fifth grade classes 
So there are times when it's more salient when there's a, mm -hmm. like the 250th too was a nice opportunity. And they had the uh, 250th entity had a logo drawing contest and Megan's daughter, I think had a very nice, <clears throat> with, no, 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 no. What, it wasn't, no. that was, I thought she, she, she drew something. Oh, yeah. no, that was like an earth. Earth Day. Earth Day. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, sort of. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, and I think an occasion like that would make it sort of uh, much more relevant to say that, you know, we're going to celebrate such and such an occasion and mm -hmm. it would, we'd like to have. Hello. Hi. Hi <laughs> there. Okay. Um, this is the historical commission meeting. Yeah, yes. yeah. I'm just. Are you interested? I am interested. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I'm so proud of you. No, so what is your name? Uh, my name is Corey Smith. Okay, Corey. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to see you. Okay, we're we're talking now about um, the, the 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 just the idea of having a uh, a high school essay contest on some aspect of Cohasset history and a recognition award for the preservation of a house that might have been demolished but wasn't and so and so we're just sort of tossing around some some thoughts we're not really ready to to move forward yet but we're talking about the possibilities and maybe uh, the timing of it too which which is kind of um I think would help us if, if there were an event like the 250th celebration or the uh, Captain John Smith Day. I find them both. Could we do we have would we have to roll them out at the same time? Could no. we start with this easier one and maybe keep on the back burner the oh definitely complicated. In fact, I, I think that would work better. I think especially for the the school essay contest you really would need to get the teachers involved I don't think I think you, you might get one high school student who would write an essay but I think it's more successful if the teachers can assign the kids and and help and and because I you know we'd end up having to judge them but that's a little hard I'd rather have the teacher maybe pick the five best essays in her class presented to us and then we could decide it at some point you know that's why we had jack come in though well but he he didn't want to do that he no. didn't want to talk to the teachers about it no that's not what i got no he, i asked spoke him to, i spoke to him about it at length before i invited him yeah i know but it was his thinking that he knew who exactly who he was going to speak with i asked him though i said would you interface with the teachers and he said i wouldn't feel comfortable doing that it's the exact opposite of what I got from talking with. What, what, but the point, you, you the, point were here. the point was that um, he he was here to be that intermediary. That was why he came here. But I think he decided he didn't want. He to. hasn't informed me of that. No, I think he made. It. Well, anyway, I, I I heard that. I, I how about the rest of you who are here? I I I don't see the Jack. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't want to. Yeah. No. That was my impression. Well, that's 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 good enough for me then. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, yeah, okay, okay, that's fine. I stand corrected. All right. Oh, okay. What do you know? Surprise! Surprise! Yeah. Okay. That's a misunderstanding. If he didn't understand our question, if he is willing to confirm, I think we're. Agree. I think we have a multitude of shared opinion here that yeah. probably usurps mine. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good. Um, yeah. yeah. I think I did a look him last week and mm -hmm. or last month, and it sounded like he didn't want to put the burden on the teacher. Yeah, so, because they don't normally teach Cohasset history. Yeah, especially in the high school. It's it's well, I think maybe the year that I got involved in speaking to the fifth grade, they made a special effort because that was for the two hundred and fiftieth. So I think that the teachers at that time did focus on Cohasset history. And I don't know whether it was just the fifth grade or, or more generally in the schools. I'm thinking that maybe I missed what Jack was saying, but I don't think it should be an assigned task. I mean, I don't think any teacher should be assigning this as a task. 
I think it should be an option for any interested student who wants to participate in the process to submit. And, and then how so many ever submit, then be you know, read and judged and, uh, and, and rewarded, you know, if nothing else than a certificate, but something to acknowledge their effort and our appreciation. I don't think it should be a, a burden or a task for anyone who doesn't want to go through that process. Um, so I, I think it's a little bit more of a, you know, I, I think in both reward programs, it should be far more passive, particularly when it comes to the architectural uh, or the uh, preservation, I should say preservation, because it needn't be architectural. It could be environmental for that matter. But the more it's passive, I think the better, which is to say, if somebody restores their house to what it looked like 200 years ago, mm -hmm. and they just did it, they didn't go to the Architectural Design Review Board. Mm -hmm. They didn't read the zoning bylaws. They just did it as best they could. That should be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I think in the beginning, you'd have to look for those and reward them. And before it becomes understood that if you've done it and you want acknowledgement, then come to an HC meeting and let us know what you've done. But I think initially you have to look to see if anyone has done anything significantly in that yeah. arena. But I don't think you have to wait for a, an, a, another committee to determine whether or not this committee awards somebody's efforts. In other words, I think it's be, be enough to kind of get the ball rolling in the preservation. If we award somebody mm -hmm. for doing what they want to do out of because they love their house, mm -hmm. that's great. That should be enough to get the next person or the person after that or the person after this and hey, there's maybe something here that, you know, th this, this this could be, this, this is something that they reward you for doing this and not becoming a cookie cutter kind of thing. Yeah. Well, maybe we should try to observe or hear about people who are doing this and just, you know, see what there is out there. We don't really know. Um, it would be, you know, this is something we could all do. As, as Sounds like they do that in Cambridge too. They look for. They do. They they drive around. Well, yeah. they just notice things, yeah. just as we would if we walk, you know. Right. And and then you you just ask some questions. I have, I have a few in mind. Yeah, good. And then as soon as they start to hear or mm -hmm. notice that you're recognizing it, people will yeah. start doing it and then walk, reach out to. The committee that's kind of in charge of that, and say, hey, I'm I'm doing that too. I feel like there's so many people in town who do redo their houses all the time, and uh, I just feel like a social media post is saying, have you recently, yeah, beautified your home, the old mm -hmm. antique? There's, there's let, let us know. Let, let us know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'd like to know. Yeah. Yeah. See what they um, the little code here. Yeah. With, uh, we could do that right away because I think the first thing to, to do is find out what's out there. Are, are, is this happening? Um, I'd like to nominate the uh, Historical Commission for clearing Wadley Park and restoring it to its historical. <laughs> oh, we have to. Uh, we, well, I, we could. I'd like us to be the first recipient. I, I know. It's, it's like. Wow, <laughs> that, that, if we had the, the Mariner, that would yeah. be front page news yeah. about the whole thing. That, right that's, well, that's, you know, that is a shame that we don't have the Mariner. That's a terrible loss because it's yeah, very it's hard to. Yeah. yeah, right. But anyway, I think this is something. If who Who is Facebook savvy? Would you Would you like to? Are you going to figure it out? I have okay. not done it. Yeah. Um, well, you and Mark, I think Mark, yeah, Mark, yeah. Is, you hear the, the, the young kids, <laughs> you, you two figure out maybe. From the town's handle, I think? Like who, um, well, I don't. Well, if you're going to do Facebook, it would maybe Cohasset 143. Okay. okay, yeah. And then you could. Turn it on and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, is that the same as the anchor? What's no, the, no, the that's, anchor that's, that's different. Yeah, the anchor actually is a, is a pretty good source of that. I did write a, an article on the um, anchor's row house for uh, yeah. for for the scene and just talking about its history and and that is another way we could acknowledge if we're not quite ready to have a, a, a award program if we find a house or a 
a, it could be a store or whatever that is being renovated, you know, I, I'd be happy to, to write something and you can all edit or somebody else can write it. I don't care. What's the anchor? The anchor is an online newspaper that's that's really quite good. Um, you just go to just Google Cohasset anchor and look. Yeah, there are a couple that might be something like a restaurant, but we don't want that. It's, it's the news. And you click on that, and it's, it's very good. It has different sections, news, the scene, um, restaurants, I think. Anyway, it's... it's They've it's, resurrected the police blog. Oh, have they? Yeah, it's yeah. Active, but it's not like you, the Mariner it used to be, you know, all like typed out as to what it is. It, now it's a scan. All, like, people's oh, there's too all much, these, right. Information's a product. Right. It's so hard. It is, it, I've looked at it. It's really hard to, you know, tease out like a good, you know, like raccoon going through, like, you know, Mr. Wadley's, like, you know, trash. It's, it's hard to find a good, juicy bit that, like, uh, neighbor calls top for a third time because, you know, coyote is like having a feast kind of thing. It's not the way it used to be. Could we also use roll? I know that there's a. We get that publication. Oh, oh that's a, that like a, oh, you know, but they, they, they also like, have an Instagram account, which I think, I mean, that's another way to do it. I think account. Instagram is better than Facebook. Okay. But I think yeah. it yeah. needs to probably be people from mm -hmm. a old demo. Who's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, anyone else can do this too, but I, I just think that the, yeah. the younger people are more into it than, than perhaps some of us. Would you? Yeah. Do I, mean, I feel like we could put a framework together next month, but what we want to do. Yeah, know, okay. Do, publish yeah, yeah. yeah do, okay, bring it, bring it for next month. But like, yeah, okay. I'm doing a poll, just saying, like, um, like, I don't know how to do a poll, but I just need them on it, like, vote yes or no. Would you have an interest in like, the, the, would you do you have a property that you would consider um, submitting for something like this? Because we're not, we don't have anything structured yet. We can't be no. like, guess what? There's this program, yeah. there's an award, here's the criteria. It's yeah. more of the temperature. Yeah. Right. Any right. high level criteria yeah. that we would have? Right. For, okay. for, for what? The voting on the winner. Okay. Yeah. Um, like what's the. If in order to submit, you have to be yeah. in order to, I don't know, some sort of percentage. Well, yeah, what, the, the, the coding say, well, look, look at my house. It's, it's a, you know, okay, 1900s. I, but again, it's the, you walk inside and there's, okay. there's all open concept. It's like nothing, nothing but the frame. But, okay. but, but again, it doesn't, I think you have to think about whether or not you want to restrict it or oh, yeah. it. No, I'm, I'm just saying there has to be like some sort of parameters. Yeah. Wide parameters is what I'm thinking about. I mean, if somebody oh, yeah. stores their boat, is that shouldn't that be eligible if they if they restore their stream, the walls in their stream? You know this, I'm sorry. Is it to so that um, not be nobody put their hat and everybody put their hat in the ring? Why didn't I win? Well, the winner scored a little better on the on the criteria. It makes it less um, justice. Um, I did. Yeah, I mean, not, not like stringent, like it's got to be, you know, you got to tick every single box. I think it, you know, there is a lot of, because we are, this is very, this is relatively new. Well, this is new. Um, I think it would have to, there would be definitely have to be broad kind of, um, a, 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 like re evaluation of what, we're, of what you're doing, because you don't want to scare people off. Like, you know, putting screws to the people the first time. Not to say that we put the screws to the people going down the road, but you know, you need to have some sort of you know, in order for not to go off the rails right from the start, there has to be some sort of um, you know, guardrails. I I did look through you know the Cambridge Historical Commission, and they do have um, the awards are based on the following criteria, and they're just four. Uh, one, historical and architectural significance of the property. Two, exceptional quality of the project. Three, extent to which the project contributed to the preservation of the property. And four, impact of the project on the preservation of the city's historic resources. So they have, you know, those are general. So you can just have a few, yeah. few simple criteria. 
but you do need to have an idea of what you're looking for and, and what makes one project better than another and, and sort of worthy of recognition. Because just you know, fixing up a, a, a roof or something isn't going to do it. You know, the town just um, did a lot of masonry work on the flag uh, pole mount on the common. And when that was all broken apart, I thought, what a big job that was going to be to replace it and what would you replace it with? And I expected a lot more discussion about it. But, you know, we've got this great superintendent of public works now who brought in this great mason, Rosanos, and restored it to what it looked like identically. It looks nice. It looks nice. It's, it does look nice. it's exactly what it looks yeah. like. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how they do it. But I was shocked at the speed and the, mm -hmm. and, the and frankly, the result, because we never know it had been done. Yeah. And that's not easy. It's all curves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all curves. There's nothing more difficult than you could possibly imagine in masonry, right? I, I, so I was you know, very impressed. That's not, again, I don't get, it's not really architectural, it's structural, but it is architectural in the sense that's a shape that mm -hmm. uh, you don't see too often. Mm -hmm. Um, but the town is an eligible participant as, as well. Yeah, I suppose so. Why not? Why not? Uh, yeah, we want to encourage them, in fact, to, yeah. to, to do this kind of work. Yeah. So I, I think let's, you know, you think about some way we can sort of reach out to the public. We'll all keep our eyes and ears open about what's going on in town and, and come back next time and see what we come up with. Right. So this is somewhat really the last um, item on the agenda is is re related to what we've been talking about. The um, zoning bylaw committee has been working on uh, the possibility of a demolition delay bylaw. Your favorite thing. <laughs> is it called? Is it called that? Yeah. And, and um, a historic lobby and Tom Callahan was giving a talk uh, the last time we were here uh, to a, a group of people who I think it's cakes and conversation that Kristen Norton holds once a month or so. And he was he wanted to talk to us, but said he would just as soon email what he had to say. So this is what he said. So ever since the predecessor zoning bylaw working group met, we have talked about adding a demolition delay bylaw, first talked about in the mid 2000s. And Woody Chittick in particular was concerned about preservation of historical assets. At the forum of the zoning bylaw committee recently held about the village, members of the public expressed support for expanding the common historic district or creating another one. The demo delay bylaw in circulation is based on Norwell's as theirs existed in the mid 2000s. It has been updated and so too has a model bylaw out there. Council has pointed out that neither the issue of demo delay or expanding historic districts would be included in the zoning bylaw because he's uh, on the, this committee, but in the general bylaw, the ZBC, the zoning bylaw committee, Working with council can agree, however, to write up whatever it is we want. So the issue for your commission is, A, would you support a state-of-the-art demo delay bylaw? And obviously, would the commission take on the role it would have under such a bylaw, which is, um, I, if we were to do that, I think we might want to appoint a committee, uh, subcommittee of expert people, you know, architects, um, builders and so forth. Um, you really want to consult your charter as well. Yeah. What would that What would that entail? The demolition delay bylaw. Yeah. Well, because what is there? What is there now that you have to wait? We don't have a demolition. We don't have any. No, we don't any have way. any. I the, thought it was there. I mm -hmm. thought it was a ninety day. No, no. not not in this town. The, you know, the, the originally, I, I think the predecessor of a, of a, of this was 
and it's now probably 70 years old, but they're Cohasset. Cohasset actually had the first CIA, Cohasset Improvement Association. Not that thing in Washington. <laughs> so I, really? The Cohasset Improvement Association was formed in, I think, the 30s or the 40s. 19, 1912. 1912. It's going to the BIA at all. Take it away, Merle. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. It's just, it's good to kind of it's cohesive between, you know, that one year, I suppose, talk about, but that, that's where the BIA hosts that. And they had uh, 10 or 15 uh, people from the Cohesive Operating Zone. And it was uh, very interesting. So, okay. Yeah. But anyway, that expired after, I think it was a 50 year. You know, well, they, they, they disbanded it. The Herbie Gates was was getting too old, and uh, there's a couple of ones that were getting too old to put much into it. And they, they wanted to sell it, so there's like the Boy Scouts, but we said, no, we don't want it. <laughs> it would be a big pile of ash, ash before we get through. And then the, um, and then the common had, had you know, the uh, their improvement association. And that was a 50 year covenant that was on the deeds, I believe it was on the deeds of the common homes. The, yeah, I was uh, aware of that. Okay, yeah. And expired. So that ran out, I think, in the 90s, mm. um, technically. Mm. Uh, but it's been replaced by boards and commissions that fulfill a similar role. The historic district commission is one. Um, yeah, I have more information on the historic. Uh, local historic districts than I do on the demolition delay bylaw because the other thing is um, okay would the would the commission take on the role it would have under a demolition delay bylaw it's just a question he's asking and be really a non-zoning issue but what is the commission's reaction to the idea of expanding or adding historical districts in town so I said well what exactly is a historical district? Um, and I'll just read this to you because it's a serious question. And he, you know, they'll create a bylaw, they'll write a bylaw if we feel we'd like to add like a village historic district or Jacobs Meadow historic district. They will do that background work for us. Okay. This is from the uh, Mass Historical Commission's. Uh, booklet establishing local historic districts and I this I don't you know this is a, a brief uh, summary of, of what the booklet had to say it went on quite some time it says local historic districts protect significant buildings from demolition and inappropriate alterations they do not prevent all changes intent the intent is to guide appropriate changes and additions through a local decision making process so you designate a district, say you want just, it'd be easy to think about the Cohasset downtown, the village downtown. So you get the town meeting to establish a, a, a downtown historic district. And then you have a, a board and it, it tells you here that the, I think the selectmen appoint a board to, um, to review the, the, the changes that people want to make to their homes in this district. Okay, I'll just go on. Okay. Local historic districts and commissions review changes to exterior architectural features visible from a public way. So it's only what you see from the street. You can do whatever you want in, the, in your backyard or whatever. Okay, um, and then it, then, and then you, some projects may be exempt from the projects being a, one of your reconstruction projects may be exempt from review depending on the wording of your bylaw or is determined to be the policy of the commission. For example, paint color, you can paint your house, whatever you want, um, window box, AC units, sidewalks, driveways, screen doors and windows, storm doors and windows. So um, other than that, you you would need to get approval, I guess, from, from your from the local district um, committee. 
And a local historic district can be a single building. For example, I suppose I, I tried very hard to get the uh, Cohasset Savings Bank listed on the National Register and they changed the goalposts. They said, oh, the interior also has to be historically accurate. And of course they've changed that so much. So we didn't get that, but if you didn't want th that building in particular altered in a significant way, you could maybe declare that to be a historic district. They get town meeting to declare it. Okay, and it said the recommendation, oh, uh, um, uh, okay, and, the uh, historic district could be as large as the entire island of Nantucket, which is one historic district, and most average 100 properties. Okay. And you add, if you want one, you ask the select board to appoint a local historic district study committee. So you don't necessarily do it as a commission here. You, you get another group to decide whether it, you know, that should be a historic district or not. All right. Um, and it said, you know, ideally the recommendations for one will be just one component of a much larger and more comprehensive strategy to ensure the preservation of historic resources and community character. Now we don't, we don't have a, a plan, but I suppose a demolition delay bylaw would be a plan. And you need to talk to the property owners uh, and make sure that they're okay with the with the process. And that's important to to stay in touch with them for the uh, historic district. Um, and then the it, the town meeting is is the body that establishes the uh, the district. So that's because uh, I didn't know what, and we need to know in order to answer uh, Tom Callahan. So. Yeah, are you interested in in the idea of of either? I don't think we can expand the um, his, the common historic district because that's that's a national register historic district and it has its own group that decides what to do. But we could create uh, one in the village or where, wherever. And we did, we did do the demolition delay bylaw. The other thing I thought I could do is I, I did organize it by streets and we can see where, what areas need to be protected. What, what part of the village is it that you think needs to be? Well, just the downtown, you know, I was just thinking. Is it, is it, is it, is it more of the village something we'd like to see replaced? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I was thinking, um, you know, they're taking away that the gas station and they're actually putting up a nice building up. But the first drawing of that thing was was hideous. Oh, did they change the design? of the? Yeah, uh, they, they yeah. improved it. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, they improved it. Just, but then I was thinking I was just there, you know, today <laughs> and and just you know, imagine what the village would look like if it were also a little boxy. No. Buildings and shops, and granted, it'll look great with a gas station. There. Yeah, it'll look good. That's right. And but would you want? I mean, would you want to preserve the buildings that are there? That are the stores. You know, most of them are houses. Yeah, there are some nice buildings. Yeah, they're and it's it has a character. It has its own oh, character. Absolutely. It's not beautiful, but but it has its own character. And I'd hate to. I personally would hate to see that changed, but. Other people might say, well, you know, why not get something, you know, a nice design for a new downtown? Anyway, how, how do you all feel about it? It doesn't have to be that, but I, that just came to okay. mind. Okay, several years ago, there was talk of expanding the historic district because I know that we live on North Main Street and it was, there was talk of it going down to Redgate Lane. Hmm. And it, I, it, didn't pass. So I assumed it must have gone before town meeting or something. I don't but remember that. Do, call that. do you remember that? Vaguely, because of the Redgate Lane was the milestone there. But I don't remember what happened there either. And I don't know if it was also going in the southerly direction. I think it was. Yeah. So because I think it was you know, people expanding aren't gonna... it from the common, right? Or something like that. And it it didn't there are people who are not going to want to be shackled by the regulations no. that would come from that 
it's a burden on the title. And, and also, you know, this is a good example. I, I happen to think that that the town is getting better, the village is getting better looking, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but it's been very shabby for so many decades. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I I don't I tend to disagree that there's anything there, with the exception of maybe Fleming's and the bank. I mean, they're all older homes, as you say, with storefronts put on the front. Are the homes behind the storefronts architecturally unique and historic? I, I, I don't know because we don't really see them. Mm. Um, but I tend to think that look what look what the building 19 in Hingham has become. It's become the Derby Street shops. And so you went from this big box store to this the most probably successful outdoor mall, at least on the South Shore, if not the state of Massachusetts. Um, it's it's ridiculously successful. Mm. And it's just little shop. Really, it's just shops. It isn't huge, big box or department stores. Mm. So, is there a place for that in Cohasset? Of course. But can you make what's there now better, more walkable, more attractive to the consumers and the people that want to go shop there by sticking with what's there? I'd like those people to be able to make the difference and make changes. Mm. So, personally. I see that as not being something that should be bound by more restrictions, but you know, maybe even helped to make improvements. But that's where you know people, reasonable minds can differ. Mm -hmm. Some people might say, let's make it historic. Yeah. I think that would be a yeah, I think it's a sort of build. I think wait, for my you know, you have there's where Curtis was, there's like a burnt. In the bank and the hardware so maybe the hardware store with the bank now um thinking I'm just, I'm just thinking off the top of my head like that building then you have uh the Bates had the the Borbia is the bagel shop and then it's, it's for it was going off from when i was a kid you had the pharmacy which is no longer exists right. it's a real estate agent then you have maybe a couple storefronts now like five south main in the building next to it mm -hmm. but don't forget cards, cards and charts. You know, gold cards and charts, yeah. This is a you have the Seabird building. I think it's yeah. worth, I mean, there is a finite amount of space. And yes, it, there could be a um, chance to expand that and make it like, as you say, Derby Street, kind of like walkability. I think it's great now that we have the barrel back. It's a lot more traffic for sure. I think it's worth, you know, because we have that traffic back and we are, you know, people are going back downtown. I think it's worth exploring the fact that, you know, maybe don't, maybe if there is like a historic district light, say, trying to keep it the, the quaintness that it is, but again, allow people to do what they, you know, um, Profiteers want to do with, with their shops, but I think that you, I mean, you certainly don't want to lose the those buildings that are that are there. But there is a finite amount of space, and you know you're also gaining another big storefront that's coming in. With, look, look at the uh, red. I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. I think the buildings that are worth saving will naturally be preserved, natural just economics, but. The Red Lion Inn, which is probably the it's oldest a travesty. One. Well, I think it was a travesty what, what, what happened to the Red Lion. Okay. Um, did they have to make those changes to be successful? No, absolutely not. No, I don't know if I can agree with you on that. Um, and, and, and it's been very successful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's been a big help to the economic part of downtown. Oh, it's certainly, kept, it's certainly kept the downtown like off life support and if for it, sure if it was just a little bar and a little restaurant with a rooming house upstairs as it was for the last two or three hundred years i don't think that would be as good for the community as what it is i guess i guess more my my point about the red lines i was more attached to what the bar was in the dining room i don't you know i think certainly the addition to the barn in those those types of additions have kept within the style of um 
of the building and the downtown and in, in, in when the line is when it was has always been there. Um I just you know I like I guess I like going to like a, a dark place where I can sit and have a pint and that's it. And then maybe have like a nice nice dinner. And I you know we all we all like fancy, but we do we need fancy all the time. And I guess that's where, like, I if I go to the line, I'm getting fancy. And I'm getting fancy all the time. You have beer; it's fancy all the time, which is which is nice. Yeah, but don't forget that dark place where we used to have a beer at the old Red Lion. Ultimately, became a place where everyone was serving happy meals. I mean, it, it was a younger crowd going there. Lunch We're crowd. All younger than... <laughs> I don't even want to talk about those things. <laughs> but uh, but things people, I think the demographics of the community changed. I mean, we've got a lot of young people, a lot of okay. baby carriages get pushed on. I mean, we went, we went there for lunch even 20 years ago. You were competing for a table with three mothers or or parents with children. And that place had to change. And and I think it's you know, I'm I'm the first guy to hate change. I hate change. But boy, I mean, that was a huge bold move that I made. And it's been such a wonderful resource for people to rent for their weddings. Oh, absolutely. Parties. So I just think that kind of creativity, that kind of exploration of what can we do with this kind of a building is somewhat, somewhat stifled if they're staring at a set of regulations that put more value on what it's been than what it could be. Well, I mean, how does, I'll be interested to see how like uh, Nantucket does it. Because they seem to have kept their like when you walk off that ferry, you know if you take away all the cars and you walk right down all those cobblestones, you can almost imagine what it was like to see a schooner behind you in the, in, in the harbor. But if you go a hundred yards out of that village, you'll see a fifteen million dollar absolutely mansion being built almost all over the island. But so. you you kind of they've managed to really um, you know keep the downtown like you, you, what, what i imagine like what something honestly cohasset ought to have it, it's a, we, we we owe it to this town like the town is owed a downtown like that i think mm. in a way not necessarily a bunch of re, or high-end re, retail shops but like i mean it's something that's nice and crisp and clean and fits with the character of the um of like what what well, that's what Nantucket is. Your first impressions always that that's what Nantucket is. Well, you know, we we actually don't have a local historic district. The um, Government Island and the Common are National Register mm -hmm. Historic District, but Hingham does have historic districts. And uh, Woody Chittick, I think, is very cognizant about that, and his he's very he's the one who's been. Um, promoting this idea. So how would it be if I invited Woody to come to our next meeting and, and talk to us a little bit more about, you know, what he's thinking? Would that be great? Would that be I, good? I, and then, because I think this is, this on. is the beginning. I mean, yeah. we're just talking about, it. we might decide we don't, we, you know, it wouldn't work here, but um, I think we need to find out more about it. So I'll, I'll ask Woody to our next meeting, um, which will be actually, um, uh, It'll be January 9th. I'm just going to make a note here. A Monday? It's Monday. It'll be a, normally we meet on Monday. It, it was just a town meeting last night that prevented us. But my question to you is, do you want to meet in here? I mean, we, we met here, we came here about an hour ago, and uh, we have just 10 minutes more. They're, they're going to ask us to leave. Uh, would you rather meet? I mean, this is a nicer room. Oh, yeah. Would you like to meet here and either try to get the business done within an hour, or do you, we could start a little early as we did today? I don't know whether that was difficult for people. I, I really think that it's cool to meet in the dorm at your own. Oh, <laughs> I think I really think it really should be. Should be. I okay. think it's got to be the oh. official story to be said. Okay, well, how about, do you like meeting? I mean, is it okay? I don't think anyone loves to, to meet here at a quarter of seven. It's hard, you have to gobble down your dinner, but do you, would you be willing to do that? Because I think we need that extra 15 minutes. I think if we come here and start at seven, it just cuts it too short. 
How, how does yeah, everyone that, feel about that? That's fine. Is that good? Okay. Okay. Um, you know, David Wadsworth uh, had thought about his, yeah, he, uh, everyone knows. Okay. okay. He, he thought of some historic districts um, that would be worth maybe developing. One would be a Jacobs Meadow historic district, including the area around the meadow on Elm, Summer, and South Main Streets. That's one. And then he said, um, three buildings of the Stonely estate have been accepted for application of nomination to the National Register uh, as a as a district. And where, that, was, where was that? Stonely, um, it's down on Jerusalem Road. Uh, Jerusalem and Stonely. Yeah, it, Stonely is it? That's a, a, a Stonely. Yeah. Oh, I missed, I, I, I yeah. missed drive, drive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you could just have a three house, three building district there too. If you, I mean, this is, these are just thoughts. I mean, this is very preliminary, but we don't have to have a whole downtown area. We could just name, you know, the three houses of the Stonely Estate as a, as a historic district. I think it'd be nice to get started on something like this because- Can I nominate my house? It's, <laughs> you know, 1880. <laughs> right, right well, maybe we will get an award. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and to all the people living on the homes at the potential Stonely uh, estate, historic district, they're certainly welcome to come and address you yeah, at, yeah. at your next meeting no, if they're listening tonight. Yeah, no, I'm sure they're not. But but it it would only it doesn't mean that they can't change anything. Their plan, their project, you know, if they want to build an addition to the houses, they would have to go. I, I guess before us, I'm not sure whether I'm not clear. I mean, Woody or someone will have to clarify whether we're the ones that become the review committee or is it that there is this extra study committee and I'm, I think maybe they're the ones to make a by to produce the bylaw I, I don't know I'll, we'll have to find out we'll find out from Woody because well, we are, we are yeah. somewhat <laughs> confined by our charter too there are so many things we can do yeah for our right Supposed to do. Well, we well we will find. I mean, we'll find all this out. We'll discover this. But um, so for next time, I will ask Woody to come. You two will think about um, asking how how to reach out to people to find out who is doing a historical renovation. Um, and that's that's probably. And we'll talk about the brochure. Okay. okay well. I think I've said all I have to say, and we've gone through all the business. Was there anything that you came for that uh, you want? You just wanted to see. Oh, wow. yeah. I want to get involved. You you would like to get involved? I would. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't lived in the town very long, so I okay. I don't know. Yeah. Roads. I don't know yeah. much about town, but I want to learn about it. I like okay. history. We bought an old house, and I think it's fun. Where do you live? Um, I live on 228 on Wall Street. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, that's that's the other that's end. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> west, west. Yeah. west. Yeah. You know why it's called West Corner? Uh, Pam Hall and Cohasset No. No idea. Probably. Because the gentleman by the name of West on most of the properties down there. That's it. Yeah. I was confused well, me too. I, I I just assumed that I just assumed that like like. I just assumed that it was the like the it's north uh, yeah, direction. It's north yeah, direction. Huh. yeah. Mm. But yeah, west. Now the thing is, this is this is a seven no, member. It, we can't have more than seven members, and we currently have seven members. But occasionally, you know, someone decides to. to I thought it was just a meeting. Uh, what's that? I thought it was just a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> No, if you can leave, you can no, leave. I mean, it's just like a timeshare. But, but I'm welcome. Yeah, but you're welcome to come anytime. I mean, this is an open meeting, and yeah. delighted to have have you come if you just like to listen. Do you, want, there, yeah. you want to be informed if there's a vacancy? <laughs> <laughs>
it's, so you're it's a lack of my information I've gathered so far. <laughs> Corey, what's your last name? Smith. Smith. Oh, that's yeah. easy. Okay. <laughs> well, yes. Very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a very right. long first name. <laughs> and you live on Hull Street, yeah. right? Okay. How old is your house? It's um 18 BB. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like it's not old enough. It's not old enough. Oh, oh. oh. yeah. Well, <laughs> Marl should know he's been here for how long? That's what I was gonna say. He signed. That's how. That's why he remembered the day he signed it. <laughs> we moved into town in eighteen twelve, but I was left. I was later on. <laughs> I didn't come in eighteen twelve. We <laughs> moved all the way from one house to the other, two hundred feet away. <laughs> There are, few, there are a few people in town. But Merle, Merle comes from a family that has been here for generations. And uh, his, I don't know, grandfather, who 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 built the, the, and who built the general store? Uh, I think it was before him, Aaron Brad. Okay, but it's Bra I thought it was Brown's general store. Yeah, it became that, right? Yeah. So, okay. Well, if if anyone would you like to have anything to say or? You all set? No. Yeah. Seconds. Okay. Sorry, they're crashing. No, we're just we're very happy. Come back. <laughs> Bring your friends. <laughs> <laughs> so there are seven people and yeah. Starly. Because I noticed that there's a Zoom link on on the website. Yeah. And that's really just for the members. Then? No, no, everyone, okay. anyone. This for the public. But this is, uh, and it's for like one of our members just has had surgery. And so she can't come, but if she wanted to, she could participate through Zoom. Mm -hmm. I talked to her today. She, she's ready to come back, but she felt that there was a need to. So, Julia, yeah. or your. Yeah, back surgery. Uh, shoulder. Shoulder. Oh, wow. Is she okay? 